Hello everyone, I'm Chris with Evolve Lab and in today's video uh, I'm going to go over how you can make a zero touch node that makes web requests, uh, get requests to websites, uh, whether that's a local host or something on the actual web, um, to an API endpoint there and then have that return a JSON object that we can then parse and use in a Dynamo script. Um, included in this will be a really quick uh, intro on how to also start creating a zero touch node for yourself and then how to set that up so that it loads into um, your desired version of Dynamo. So uh, let's get started on this, shall we? First thing we're going to want to do in this uh, demo here is continue without code. Um, if you open up Visual Studio and continue without code here under create a new project, um, what this will do is it'll allow us to manage our extensions and we're going to want to go to online here and search Dynamo. Um, when you search Dynamo, you'll, you should see this Dynamo Dev Starter Kit. Um, what that is, if I pull up my Brave, uh, Brave browser here or whatever internet browser you want, um, you can pull this up too if you click more information, uh, is this a person, Alf Pickman, so it seems like, uh, created a Dynamo Developer Starter Kit. Um, we are going to use um, one of his templates, the Dynamo Zero Touch template here. Uh, looks like he has Dynamo Explicit nodes and view extensions as well. I have not tried those, though um, if they're like the Zero Touch template, they are probably useful. Uh, but anyway, uh, you'll want to install that, and when you click that, install it. Um, let's see, one that I don't have, if you're, you can click download. Um, you, don't, you see I don't have that, but if you don't, if you... Uh, don't have it installed, you'll have the download button, you do that, restart uh, your Visual Studio. So let me restart that and um, create a new project. So this should show up for you here. I'll just quickly search Dynamo up here and go to the Zero Touch Node project, click Next and start a new project. Uh, sample Zero Touch. So you'll create that project. Um, this will pop up um, and ask you for a Dynamo version. I'm actually going to use 2.6. Um, you can use whatever Dynamo version you want for whatever version of Revit you have. Um, and I'll say yes, you can edit that later. Um, so we'll create your project for you. Because I am using Dynamo uh, in Revit 2021, that currently, as of the recording of this video, is uh, 2.6. Um, so you, what you'll want to do is unload the project, uh, edit the project, and then go find all these versions where it says 2.2, and we'll just quickly change all these to 2.6. Uh, that goes down here as well, just so we make sure that this is installed in the right folder. Um, and we'll save that and uh, reload this. Uh, so this is pretty cool how it's set up because uh, you have this package.json here and it tells you all this stuff. So I'll change that to 2.6 as well. And then um, the zero touch project here, this will be whatever um, you have on your uh, video and or on your uh, project, your name here. And then you can change your namespace and name so that let's, uh, let's see here. Uh, utilities, we'll call it. And uh, so this corresponds with the namespace if you go to source, hello Dynamo. This is kind of their basic thing. Um, you say hello. And what we're going to do is we'll rename this to, uh, I don't know, web utilities, something like that. Whatever you, whatever tickles your fancy. We'll rename this also to web and I have some code already um, so I'll just copy and paste that from another project and we're gonna, what we're going to want to do is also grab the documentation for it um, otherwise it's not particularly happy and we'll also want to add in a couple using statements to get 
system.net and system.io um, so that we can uh, write, read and write from uh, the web URL. Uh, we'll also want to, if you right click on your project, manage NuGet packages, you'll also want to make sure that you have the right versions of this installed. So let's go to this one here, update all of this to the right uh, dynamo, and there you have it. What it should do is create you a node. Um, it'll be under utilities, it'll be called get from URL, um, and it'll also be under web utilities, I believe. And we'll also want, if we, uh, oops, click on properties here, double click that. We'll also want to change our debug here. So why don't we browse and change this to Revit. So that'll be under program files, Autodesk, oh, program file, I mean, oh wait, sorry, program files, Autodesk. Then we will go to Revit 2021 or whichever version of Revit you are using for yourself here. Send that to Revit EXE and that should be good to go. Um, so now we'll hit start and um, Revit should start up momentarily. Now that we have clicked our debug button and Revit is starting, why don't I also go over what happens in this code that I copy and pasted from another project. Um, basically, I, I had this already, I didn't want to type it all out for you guys. Um, I figured it was easier if I just pasted it and went over the slime outline. So essentially what's going to happen when you create this is first, well, you're also going to want to document it um, so that you get the right stuff coming out of your uh, Dynamo mode. And we'll, I'll show you that as, um, once we get a Dynamo. But first we're going to create a function. We'll call it get from URL. This name is going to be what shows up in Dynamo. So create, write it as something that um, makes sense to you from a reading standpoint. Uh, we'll also have a string, that's the URL, so like http www.google.com or whatever you want. And a refresh, I'll go over this when we get to Dynamo. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is create a web request uh, using your URL. Um, and this is whatever string you put in from a string node in Dynamo. And uh, we'll, from that web request, uh, create a stream object. And essentially what that's going to do is it's going to read all of the stuff that the, the uh, web request gets from that URL. And we're gonna create a stream reader object so that we can read that stream. And what is gonna happen then is we're gonna loop through that stream reader. So um, eventually when the stream reader runs out of information, it'll return null. Um, but in the meantime, we'll start with an empty string and then we'll go through the stream, stream reader and read line by line what is in there. Um, so first line, return it to S line. Um, S line is not null. Uh, therefore, we'll get to the next part and then we'll just append that to our return string. Um, and we'll just do that until we get to a null line, in which case we'll break. And once it breaks, we'll return our string. And that's how it works. So now that Revit's loaded, I've gone ahead and opened up a new Dynamo. I just created a new project. Uh, you can open up an old one if you want. It doesn't really matter. Do what you want. I've also pre-placed a Python script. Um, so what this does, uh, sys.path.append program files iron python uh, lib. So essentially this is where iron python is stored on your system. Um, if you go to program files by ASICs, you should be able to find it. And the reason I do this is I want to import JSON. Um, and thus I can use iron python's JSON library and parse a JSON file that has, uh, or a JSON string that has been input into here. and it will be output as uh, something else, as JSON. Um, you'll see it come out as a dictionary um, once that occurs. The other thing you'll notice is that we now have this utilities uh, right here. So how that works is if we go back to our uh, package.json, you'll remember that we called this utilities, or you may have called it something else. Um, and this namespace, you'll see, corresponds to the namespace up here that our class is in. You also notice that web utilities is the name of our class. Um, and that shows up here in Dynamo as well. So utilities, web utilities, and then get from URL. So let's load this in. 
and we'll attach this here. Um, we'll also want a boolean, and we will want a web address. Uh, we'll a string here. So this here is just a random API ge um, data generator that I found online. You. If you're using this, we'll probably want something a little more targeted for what you're uh, trying to do. Uh, but for now, this uh, fits my purposes. So let's post this in here, get our URL string, and uh, voila, we have, we have our uh, JSON. And for some reason, this is not happy. There we go, we'll just reset this. And we have our JSON here. So it looks like our random address from our random address generator is in the Philippines. Um, if we flip the toggle here, it'll give us somewhere in Romania, it looks like. Um, so the whole point of this toggle here is because uh, the web utilities get from URL, since the string doesn't change ever, it never knows to refresh this node. So if something does change on your back end for some reason, um, you can just flip this to tell it to update. Um, in this case, it's just giving you random stuff, but maybe like something changed, you had some input on a front end, or you know something that's like time related. Um, so you want to update this, you can just flip this at the time the script is run, and it will give you a JSON object out of this. And a JSON object comes in as a dictionary in Dynamo, so you can then go ahead and reference all the data you need. Um, so there you have it. Um, once again, that's how you go from this nice code here uh, through a website JSON and over to a Dynamo node. Uh, hope you found this helpful. Stay tuned for more videos.